Hello there everyone. I thought I'd start with a slightly different view today. Oh look, oh look, look. Ghost hands. Hello. <laughs> see how see how gloomy and horrible it is here at the minute. Bleh. Don't like winter. Right, okay. So following on from the earlier video. I'm going to uh, show you about attaching these pages that I've done to my envelope journal. Um, I'm just going to put this to one side for a minute. Okay, so we yes yesterday, not yesterday, earlier I measured the um, envelope sizes and cut the papers down to fit on top of the envelopes. Now, one of the things that I've done, well, you can see this, I've stitched around the edges of the pages. So I've used three different types of stitches. So I've done the zigzag, the straight, and a bit of a fancy stitch, okay? For those of you that are new to paper crafts, stroke journaling, um, there's no reason why you can't put paper through your sewing machine. Just use it as you normally would. The only thing I would say is that with your needle, keep that separate for paper usage because like scissors, paper blunts scissors. And so you would need a different needle if you're sewing onto fabric. All right. But there's no reason why you can't stitch on paper. It just helps to give the paper a decorative edge. I'm just going to move those to the one side for a moment as well. Now, as I said in the previous video, I'm going to use Collal glue for attaching these pages to this. Move all those to one side. There we go. Because this is such a liquid glue, it actually um, spreads about the paper and it doesn't leave any little ridge ridges which is what the white pva glue tends to do now i've attached all my other pages already so they're all attached there and i've just left one two three pages left to do don't forget you don't need anything on this back one but if you have already put them on and you've attached one on the back don't panic mr mannerin okay now a lot of people don't like the nibs on these glues because it's a twisty top that opens it up and if you open it up too much it pours out so you have to be quick on attaching putting the glue on and lifting it up quick all right so i've got a flow there we go so i'm just going to go around all four sides over the top of the stitching and then I just like to go diagonally quickly across the paper and then fill in any gaps because I want to make sure that I've got a nice coverage and I lift it up quick and then I'm just going to attach the paper onto the envelope Now, as you can see at the bottom, where you might not be able to see, I've got some of the threads still hanging. Some people like to leave those. I personally don't like them too much. Um, but some people like to leave them. Right, do the next one. Again, go around the four sides. Go fairly close to the edge, but not right but up to the edge of the paper because you don't want, when you're putting your paper down, all the glue to be oozing out when you make contact between the two pages. So once I've glued all my pages in place, I'm going to go through and I'm going to trim off all these little bits of thread. Okay, and the front page. 
Now the front page, if you have a look at your envelopes, you'll notice that because it's a closed envelope, it's got air trapped inside it and so it bubbles a little bit. Don't worry because I'm going to show you something that we're going to do with that envelope in a sec. So I hope you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, you can. Okay. And then I'm going to attach this one onto there. Okay. Now, I'm just going to wait for that to dry before I move on to the next bit. But I'm just going to talk to you. Do you remember yesterday I attached this tape and I said that if I went to Hobbycraft I would look out and see what it was. Well I found it. I didn't buy any but I took a photograph and printed it off. Now it's printed off terrible but that's that's the actual stuff. That that brown that, that brown stuff. That brown stuff there um is this. It's by Sticks 2 and it's you won't be able to maybe see that but it's called Craft Paper Tape. Okay, you get 25 meters of it, but it's by sticks too. Um, but I, I like it, as I say, it just gives a little bit of enforcement just around that edge. Now, like I said yesterday, you could use the micropore, you could use washi tape. There's no reason why you can't use fabric either. Um, so you could use maybe a piece of calico or a patterned cotton um, just to help to, to reinforce it and you'll see why I want to reinforce it in a, a little while. Now, as I said, this first envelope, because it's it's closed, it's got some air trapped inside of it and so it ends up being a little bit sort of bobbly wobbly. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to punch a hole or a semicircle at the top of the page and I'm going to cut through the stitching as well. If it'll go through, oh, you watch. It won't, will it? Because I'm on video. There we go. Okay, so I've now got a thumb hole. And then I'm just going to use my scissors to just trim. And I'm going to have to cut at a very slight angle. Across that top bit to just get it off and then across the top edge there so what we've got now is that air will now be released from within there but we've now got a top loading pocket so that we can put something in there and then the rest are side opening pockets a bit of glue Right, so we've got this top opening and the rest are all side ones and then the back one is left closed as well. So the, the back one is closed. You can open it if you want. Now then, you could decide that at this point that's your, that's your journal, okay? We're actually going to put a cover on ours and I'm going to show the videos for those tomorrow, being Sunday, today is Saturday. Um, but there's no reason why you can't just have this as it is, as your journal. I just think that putting a cover on it just helps to protect it and give it that little bit more strength. Okay, so that's as a, a by the by. So at this point, if you want to say, okay, I'm done, you're done. You've formed your little booklet and it's done. But I want to add inside of here now some um, coffee dyed papers. In fact, I'm using tea dyed papers. Now, I'm just going to open this one up to show you. So when you open up that's that that is this page here okay but when i flip that over i've got some tea dyed coffee dyed pages here all right because 
this as a journal to write in it, it there's not so much space to write in it so I added the papers to it now there's no sewing involved because what I'm actually going to do she's gonna hate me for this is I'm going to use this elastic and this is the elastic that I've used okay so it's the beads unlimited elasticity clear and I use the clear because you you don't know then that it's there let me just oh, unravel this it's got a bit knotted oh dear oh dear <laughs> oh I've got a tangle come on Carol shape yourself lost my ends there. oh just just bear with me a minute go put the kettle on <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute there we go okay I think I'm untangled now yeah now I like to use the clear elastic because it's not visible um, and it's and it's quite fine and it's quite strong really for such a thin elastic now there's no reason why you can't use any other elastic you could use an elastic band you could use um, a hair bobble you could even use um, um, that stuff for your teeth what's it floss dental floss but this is another reason, because I'm using this elastic, that I've put this tape on this edge because I'm now going to wrap the elastic around the pages in this journal and it's going to go over this spine here, which means that you've got a weak point at the bottom and at the top. So at least with the tape being there, it just helps to hold it sort of in place so it doesn't rip into the envelopes. So, I'm going to open up my first page. You could just use ordinary um, embroidery thread. So, don't feel that you've got to go out and go and buy anything. So, I've, you because it's clear, you won't be able to see what I'm doing maybe, but I'm holding the, the loose end down at the bottom of the page there and I'm wrapping it along the page and down the back. And then I'm flipping the page. And then I'm going to wrap it around that one and down the back and then I'm flipping over a page and then I'm wrapping it around that and down the back now I'm not pulling it tight I don't want the elastic really tight I'm keeping it sort of fairly loose and then I'm going to wrap it whoop, over the page and down the back and then I'm going to tie it here at the bottom. So I'm going to tie those two ends together. Okay, so I've now got all those elastics there, look, going down the spine down there. And I've got one down that page, one down that page, one down that page, and one down that page. Okay? Now, because of it being clear elastic, it is likely that it will come loose, even though you've knotted it. So, I'm going to try and show you up close. Where that knot is, I'm going to get some glue in a bit and I'm probably going to use my glossy accents once I've finished doing all my crafting bits so then I can leave it to just dry. I'm just going to put a little dab of glossy accents just on that glue, just on that elastic to prevent it from keep coming undone. But I need to do that once I've done all my other things so then the glue's not, not getting everywhere. All right. So what I'm now going to do is with my tea dyed papers and I have got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've got eight sheets of paper so that's two pages 
for each section. So I now need to trim these down to fit inside of here. So if I open up the page, I can see what surface area I need to cut them to. So the actual surface area is 10 and a quarter inches, right? But I don't want them as big as that, so I'm going to cut the papers a little bit smaller. So I'm going to cut them to 10 inches, so then I've got a bit of a border around. So 10 inches by... Now this is just over seven... Well, let's say seven and a quarter. So I'm going to cut these now to seven inches so that again I've got that little bit of a border with inside there so I'm going to cut my papers down to 7 inch by 10 inch now you will need to measure your own surface area and decide what, what size you're going to cut your papers but as I say I'm going to cut mine 7 by 10 and I'm just going to demonstrate with just two sheets of paper unlock so I'm going to get two sheets and I'm going to cut it ten inches. Make sure I'm butt up against the edge there. Ten inch by seven. that's my two sheets of paper cut now for my first part of my journal and I'm just going to fold these in half now I'll show you on the, the, the journal that I did previously I actually corner punched the edges of my paper you didn't fold them very well Carol I'm going to I'd corner punch the edges of the paper so that they look pretty. Now I'm going to do that on this one, but I'll do that off camera later. There we go. That's better, Carol. Okay, so I'm going to open that up, and because I've used elastic, when I grab hold of that, I can actually lift it up so that I can actually then slide my pages underneath there. And I've now got my two pages in place. This means that I can use these pages to write on and then once I've finished writing on them, I can replace them with some more paper. I can also add other pages underneath there as well. So it doesn't just have to be your tea or your coffee dyed pages. You can add whatever paper you so wish. The only thing that I would say is don't make it too bulky because the more we start adding, the more that this is going to end up opening up and being too bulky because we've to decorate it yet. Okay, so add your papers on the front think about if you want to add your coffee dyed papers and what you're going to wrap around to be able to attach your papers cut your coffee dyed and tea papers to the size that you need do any punching on the corners or any punching along the edges if you so wish um, and we'll leave it at that for today so I think that that's that's enough I don't want to addle your brain too much if you're a newbie and tomorrow I'm going to um, talk to you about making your greetings cards up now don't worry if you haven't got greetings cards blank ones um, or otherwise because you could just use a sheet of card cut it out and fold it up all right so tomorrow i'm going to talk to you about using these and what we're going to do with those and how to decorate those um and also about the front cover of the journal as well and then on monday 
I will talk to you about doing some of the decorative pieces within it. That might even extend to Tuesday. We'll see how we go. And then, as I say, next week, I'll show you how to make a different kind of envelope journal. OK, so I think that that will keep you occupied for a little while this Saturday. Hope you have fun. Um, remember, it is meant to be fun. Don't worry and stress about it. It's only paper at the end of the day. All right. See you all later. Bye.